26 states chose not to expand Medicaid under the Affordable Care Act. Indiana is one of those, but hundreds of thousands of Hoosiers still don't have health insurance, so Governor Mike Pence yesterday laid out details of an alternative health care expansion plan, which he says is built on healthy, cost-conscious decision-making. The plan is being called HIP 2.0. Sarah Whitmire has more on the proposal and why some say the plan is long overdue. At a press event this week, Governor Mike Pence rolled out HIP 2.0, a proposed expansion of the Healthy Indiana Plan. Well, HIP 2.0 is a better way. It's a better way for those hardworking Hoosiers. To better health, to better coverage, to a better health care system. At this stage, it's just a proposal, but Pence is hoping his plan to provide coverage to about 350,000 Hoosiers living in poverty will get support from federal officials. Pence's plan would cover people between ages 19 and 64 who make under $24,000 and can't currently get health care. These are people who live in the so-called coverage gap. As the debates in Washington, D.C. about the Affordable Care Act and Medicaid expansion continue, we're reforming Medicaid in Indiana. And hundreds of thousands of Hoosiers will have better access to quality health care as they aspire to a better life because Indiana is leading the way. Pence has refused to expand Medicaid to close the coverage gap, and he's been vocal in his opposition to the Affordable Care Act. HIP, which started as a pilot program six years ago and now covers nearly 40,000 Hoosiers, has always been the vehicle by which Pence said he would expand health coverage. His HIP 2.0 plan has three options, HIP Link, HIP Basic, and HIP Plus. HIP Link provides assistance to people who can't afford their employer insurance. HIP Basic provides a very limited amount of coverage to people at little or no cost. HIP Plus covers more, including dental and vision, but people are required to share some of the cost. Pence says the cost-sharing approach forces people to take more personal responsibility for their health care. They visit the ER less and tend to seek preventative care. The Indiana Hospital Association is praising Pence's plan, even though it's partially funded by increasing the state's hospital assessment fee. Government Relations Vice President Brian Tabor says it's still good for hospitals because they've struggled for years to provide care they're not compensated for. Just a couple of years ago, it was $3 billion in uncompensated care in one year. So what will happen is, as these individuals have coverage through uh, HIP 2.0, that uncompensated care will be reduced. So the costs for hospitals will be reduced. And so even through paying those payments, there will still be a net gain for hospitals. Indiana will submit its plan for federal approval by the end of June, following two required public comment meetings. Until the plan is fully reviewed, health care activist Rob Stone says he's holding off judgment but he is optimistic. Boy, I love Indiana ingenuity and, and I'm a native born Hoosier and, and all of that, but I'm not really sure we need to reinvent the wheel. And I'm not really sure um, that this plan um, is going to um, be cost effective because it looks to me like there's a lot of administrative cost built into this too. So I've got my concerns but I also see that it could be a huge step in the right direction. And in a statement, House Democratic leader Scott Pilath wrote, if the Obama administration and Governor Pence can agree on a plan, everyone should applaud. He says it's long past time to stop with the political grandstanding over Obamacare and to start solving real problems for real people. Indiana University SPIA professor Kosali Simon joins us now to talk about, talk this out a little bit more. So under the original provisions of the Affordable Care Act, um, states have the opportunity to expand Medicaid and the federal government would uh, largely pay for most of that. What's Pence's strategy here with his plan? So Indiana is one of several states that have said that we would like to expand Medicaid but under our own terms which in, in the case of Pence means using the existing structure of the Healthy Indiana Plan. But Indiana still has Medicaid, right? Indiana still has Medicaid for all the populations that were eligible for Medicaid prior to the Affordable Care Act. So what's in question here is how we would move forward with the expansion of the Medicaid program as, as planned in the Affordable Care Act. 
So what kind of requirements then would HIP 2.0 need to uh, follow to be able to be approved by the federal government? Or to so, comply to the, the Affordable right, Care Act? That, yeah. That's this, this big question we're waiting to see whether the current waiver draft that's being circulated, that started yeah, yeah, circulating yesterday, is going to meet the requirements that the federal government is going to place on states' plans to expand the Medicaid program and still be qualified for the money that's in the Affordable Care Act. So the, the HIP 2.0 is, is different from the earlier HIP plan in, in some ways that, that, that Penn's hopes will satisfy the federal requirements. For example, there is no longer a cap on the enrollment, and that's what the federal money would be used for. There are higher reimbursements to providers, and there are um, uh, there is some cost sharing involved, which is going to be this, this uh, what's predictably the, the sticking point, because unlike with other expansions, individuals who qualify will have to pay very nominal amounts, but towards this health savings account, the health savings account being the factor that characterizes the Indiana plan and mm -hmm. makes it different from other states. So Pence mentioned this 350,000 uninsured Hoosiers. Were they really, are they really going to be able to be covered by this, or is something going to come up? When we think about the scope for how many people who currently don't have any source of insurance and don't qualify for Medicaid could be covered, what we're talking about is the, the maximum possible. So any plan that is provided will need to convince individuals to sign up, and we know that not everyone who's eligible signs up. Now, are there other states that are doing what uh, Indiana is doing, or is Indiana kind of going out on a limb here? There's no other state that is using the exact mechanism that Indiana is proposing, but many state, there are many states that are, are asking for permission to try something different. Premium support plans are being uh, asked for. There are, there are states that have received waivers. Arkansas is a, a well-known mm -hmm. example of a state that has been able to negotiate with the federal government for something slightly different. What's different about the Indiana plan is the use of this health savings account, this high deductible plan combined with a, an account through which the cost sharing will be paid. Well, thank you very much for adding to this discussion. Very thank interesting. Thank you for having me. Okay.